And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. The world is clearly deteriorating around us, and there are prophetic signs popping off everywhere for those with eyes to see. We are living in the end time. The moon turns blood red, the earth shakes, soldiers die in wars, the four horsemen of the apocalypse have already begun their run of death and destruction, and the trumpet-like sounds echoed throughout the world. These sound like an eerie trumpet ensemble, moaning and blasting an inscrutable message. But absolutely nothing was observed at any time as the source of the bizarre sounds. This phenomenon has forced many to think that is a warm-up for Christ's return. But does it hold true? The answer from the Bible comes in a series of prophecies. Join us in today's episode of Eyes 200M as we crunch all the strange sounds and the second coming. We know there will be a second coming of Christ because it was told to us in the Bible as his first coming when he came to the earth as a baby, lived a sinless life, ministered to those around him, and died for the penalty of sins so we could have a chance to be redeemed. When his earthly ministry was finished, he had to depart from them and be carried up into heaven. Luke chapter 24, verse 51. His disciples watched as he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Acts chapter 1, verse 9. While they, the disciples of Jesus, looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Acts chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. Jesus is coming again. He said it himself. Let not your heart be troubled, You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Just as the disciples through the Holy Spirit would receive power to be witnesses for him to the ends of the earth, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, so are we called to not only look forward to his return, but to hasten the coming of the day of God by spreading this wonderful message. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 12, the promise is sure and recorded, he will return. But when will the second coming happen? In Luke chapter 21, Jesus points out the signs. Watch out for doomsday deceivers, for many will come in my name, claiming, I am he. Do not follow them. There are a lot of false prophets roaming around right now. Nation will rise against a nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Wars and rumors of war. Matthew chapter 24, verse 6. It seems like Russia, Iran, and China are pretty busy these days. There will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilence in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. Boy, is this ever on the rise? A huge earthquake just hit Turkey, balloons being shot out of the sky, just to name two. My friends, signals and signs of these last days are everywhere, but we are assured in Luke chapter 21, verse 28, And when these things begin to happen, look up and lift your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. 
But of that exact day and hour, no man knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. What the Bible does tell us is to always be ready. And being ready means preparing our hearts by accepting Jesus as our Savior and pursuing a growing relationship with Him through prayer and Bible study. Take heed, watch, and pray, for you do not know when the time is. Mark chapter 13, verse 33. But one thing is for sure, the day Jesus returns will be a unique day in the history of the world. His feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a great valley, with half of the mountain moving north and half moving south. On that day, there will be neither sunlight nor cold, frosty darkness, a day known only to the Lord, with no distinction between day and night. When evening comes, there will be light. Zechariah chapter 14 verses 2 through 7. God's enemies will be defeated, and the Antichrist and the false prophet will be thrown into a fiery lake of burning sulfur. Revelation chapter 19 verse 20. Jesus will set up his kingdom, and the Lord will be king over the whole earth. Zechariah chapter 14 verse 9. In establishing his kingdom on earth, Jesus will set up a judgment for those who are still alive after the tribulation and who are on the earth at the time of the second coming. This is referred to as the judgment of the sheep and the goats, or the judgment of nations. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. Those who survive this judgment will remain on earth and enjoy a time of peace and prosperity with Christ for 1,000 years, referred to as the millennium. See Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 through 6. Those who are found guilty in this judgment are cursed and consigned to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Satan is bound and forbidden to act during the millennium. Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 3. During this time, there will also be a resurrection of all believers in God. Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 through 6. These resurrected believers will join believers who are alive at the time of Christ's coming and those Christ brings with him from heaven. And all will live with Jesus during his 1,000 year earthly reign. At the end of the millennium, Satan will be released and one final battle will occur which will rapidly be won by Christ. Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 through 9. Satan is then permanently consigned to the lake of fire. At this point, the second resurrection will occur, and another judgment. Unbelievers will be resurrected and judged at what is referred to as the great white throne judgment. Based on their works, they will be assigned to the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. So the return of Jesus will usher in two different eternities, one with God and one without him. The truth is captured in two verses in the book of Malachi. Surely the day is coming. It will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble, and the day that is coming will set them on fire. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its rays, and you will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. Malachi chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. In short, Jesus is coming, people, and he is coming soon, without warning, in a moment. In a twinkling of an eye, billions of people will vanish, and chaos will reign supreme. I pray you are ready and prepared. If you know Jesus as Lord, you can rejoice and be at peace with eternity and where you will spend it. Only question now is, will there be traces of His truth, His grace, and His glory left behind for others to find answers and take some comfort in? If you don't know Jesus as Savior, or you aren't sure of your salvation, 
Today is the day of salvation. Don't wait another minute you may not have. No man is promised tomorrow. Time is short, my friends. We are going to live forever. Somewhere. Invite him into your heart today. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 10 says, The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You are that whosoever, beloved, and Jesus loves you. It's that simple. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 Jesus is the key. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through him. John chapter 14, verse 16. Keep the faith and worship somewhere today.